Hello everyone, welcome to my videos on elementary differential equations. This is video number 8 for chapter 6. The topic for this chapter is uh, systems of two linear differential equations. In this video, we consider the case where one has two real eigenvalues that are distinct but with the same sign. Let's take an example. Consider the following homogeneous equation, x prime equal a times x, where x is a vector of length 2, and the a matrix is the following, negative 3, 2, 1, and negative 2. And we wish to find the general solution and to sketch the face portrait. So, as we know, the first step is to find the eigenvalues of A. So this we have done multiple times, so let me be brief. So one forms the um, characteristic polynomial, that is, the determinant of A minus lambda I. I is identity, lambda is the eigenvalue. Okay, so this, um, for the A matrix, now um, subtract lambda on the um, diagonal we get this matrix and then the determinant is the product of these two diagonal which is here and here minus the product of these two diagonal which is 2 and then we can open this up and collect like terms and we'll have lambda square plus 5 lambda plus 4 so we wish to find zeros of this polynomial and then we see that we can factorize it because you can break 4 into 1 times 4 and then 1 plus 4 is exactly 5 therefore we can factorize it like that and we want to solve it when it's equal 0 so in this factorized form it is easy to find that one eigenvalue will be this factor to be 0 so lambda 1 is negative 1 and the second one is this term to be 0 so lambda 2 is negative 4 Okay, so we call for the attention here that we get two eigenvalues, they are distinct, and they are both negative, that is, they have the same sign. Okay, so the next step is to find the eigenvectors for the two eigenvalues. So let's begin with the eigenvectors for lambda 1. Let's call this eigenvector v1 and let's denote the two elements in it to be a and b. You can call it anything. Okay, and this is um, obtained by solve this equation. That thing equal um, zero. So um, let's subtract um, lambda one from the diagonal of a. So lambda one is negative one. So we'll be adding one on the diagonal. Okay, and this multiply AB. So we have this matrix here times AB, which is the eigenvector we wish to find. Okay, so add this up, you get negative 2, and add this up, you get negative 1. Then we have this times AB. So this matrix times this unknown vector here shall give me 0 vector. Okay, so um, we see that... Um, this uh, row vector is a scalar multiple of that one. You can multiply this by negative 2 and you get that one. And therefore, the two equations you can form from here, they are the same. So you can take just one of them. Say, take the simpler looking one. This one in the product that will be a minus b and that shall be 0. And therefore, a must equal b. And there's a free choice here. We can choose um, either a or b to be any value let's choose it to be one then we get the vector the eigenvector is one and one okay now we carry out a similar procedure to find the eigenvector for lambda 2 let's call this v2 and the components are c and d and we basically do a same computation, subtract lambda 2 from A, then we get 1, 2, 1, 2, times CD shall be 0. Okay, so we see that this basically gives us only 
one um, constraint, that is 1 times c plus 2 times d equals 0. Here we can choose convenient numbers. Let's choose d to be 1. Then you see that c is negative 2. Okay, so we can form our eigenvector, which is uh, v2 is negative uh, 2 and 1. Okay, and with the eigenvalues and eigenvectors obtained, we can form the general solution. So the general solution takes this form. And then we can put in the numbers for the eigenvalue and eigenvector. We get lambda 1 is negative 1, lambda 2 is negative 4, so we get negative 1, negative 4, and v1 is 1, 1, and v2 is negative 2 and 1. Okay, so it is also um, nice to write it out in components. Sometimes you wish to look at how x1 and x2, they behave individually. So x1 is the first um, element in the x vector that will be taking all these scalars and multiply by the first vector here. Okay, so we get this times 1 and then this times negative 2, so minus 2. And for x2, you will be taking the these two positions, neg 1 and 1. So you just get this plus that, which we wrote here. Now let's look at um, face portrait, how it will look like for the general solution, which takes this form, which we repeat here. And remember, lambda 1, lambda 2, they are... Um, both negative and v1 and v2 the direction of v1 and v2 we indicate here we already have those two vectors so we know that it's the direction that matters okay so let's go through the special cases first the first case is if c1 is 0 then I only have the second term here then we only have that where c2 is arbitrary number then we see that the straight line through the origin in the direction of v2 is a trajectory. And then we check the sign of lambda 2. Lambda 2 is less than 0. Then we know that as time grows, exponential of negative times t becomes smaller and smaller, and therefore the trajectory will approach origin, and therefore the direction of the arrows will be all pointing towards the origin. Now let's consider the second special case, which is very similar. Assuming now c2 is 0, then the solution consists of only the first term here. And we can make a similar argument. We see that the straight line through the origin in the direction of eigenvector v1 is a trajectory. So, And then the arrow on it is argued in the same way by checking the sign of lambda 1, which is less than 0, then solution will approach 0, and then the arrows will be pointing towards the origin. Finally, let's look at the general case where c1 and c2 are not 0. And we can look at um, asymptotic behavior as t goes to negative infinity and t goes to positive infinity. Consider the case t goes to negative infinity. So we know that um, lambda 1 is negative 1 and lambda 2 is negative 2. When um, t goes to negative infinity, the, the exponential function will blow up to infinity. Therefore, the amplitude of uh, x vector goes to infinity. But then, um, since um, lambda 2 has a bigger absolute value than lambda 1, because lambda 2 is negative 3, so when t is large, the term containing lambda 2 dominates, therefore the solution asymptotically will approach this um, second eigenvector. Similarly, the behavior for t approaches infinity can be discussed. So since lambdas are negative, then we know that everything goes towards the origin, the amplitude goes to zero. But then the two terms go to zero at a different rate because lambda 1 and lambda 2 are different. And we see that lambda 2 is minus 3, so that term decays to zero way faster. So asymptotically, um, the, um, the x vector is dominated by the first term as t becomes large. 
Okay, so we can summarize these two formula in plain words that can be used to describe the trajectory. So we see long time ago, the trajectory should all be in the direction of V2. So the trajectory will come into the picture in the direction of V2. And then they will approach origin as time grows, and they approach origin in the direction of V1 because of this term dominates. Okay, so with all these informations in our hands, we can now sketch the face portrait. Okay, so here is a, a qualitative um, sketch. It's done by hand, by the computer software. Um, for the case, lambda 1 is negative 1, lambda 2 is negative 4, and uh, v1 is in this direction, v2 is in this direction. So we already see the two special cases along v1 and v2. Everything goes towards the origin. And then in between, let's pick this region here. So far away, solution should come into the picture in the direction of v2, which is this direction. So far away, it's coming in in this direction. Then as it gets into the picture, as t grows, it um, approaches the origin in the direction of v1. So it will bend and approach here tangentially in this direction, v1. Okay, and then once one has understood that, and then we see that here, it will be coming in in the v2 direction and then approach origin in the v1. And here's the same, come into the direction of v2 and, and then approach the origin in direction v1. Here's the same v2 direction and approaching in v1 direction. Okay, so, um, yeah, so um, we can also observe that all the arrows are pointing towards the origin, the critical point. Okay, also we can see that the behavior here are solely determined um, by the um, direction of the eigenvector and uh, the, the lambda 1, lambda 2 and then kind of uh, the relation, the ratio kind of a big between them, which one has a bigger absolute value. Okay, let's make a remark, which um, is um, not too surprising. Let's say in the previous example, um, actually we end up with the uh, lambda 1, lambda 2 that are positive. Let's say lambda 1 is 1, lambda 2 is 4, and then the two eigenvectors are the same. If we have that, then the face portrait would look the same as the one we have just sketched, but with all the arrows going away from zero. So you just change the direction of the arrows. Okay, let's define such critical points. So here's the definition. If lambda 1 equals lambda 2, does not equal to lambda 2, they're distinct and they are real, and they have the same sign. In this case, the critical point, and which is the origin here, is called a node. Then if lambda 1, lambda 2 are both positive, then this node is called a source. The name source comes from the fact that all the arrows are pointing outward from the origin. It seems like the origin is a source of things and everything's coming out from there. And now in the other case, if lambda 1, lambda 2 are both negative, and then the node is called a sink. And the term sink is also um, because of the direction of the arrows. We see that all the arrows are pointing towards the origin, the critical point. Seems like there is a sink, all the water flows in there and disappears. Regarding the stability, it is easy to see from the direction of the arrows that a sink is asymptotically stable because all solutions eventually will end up in there. And then a source is unstable because all solutions will go away from it. Okay, so once we have had that example, this next one would be easy. We'll just apply um, our knowledge and then we can do it quickly. So 
we consider the case that is a source node. Okay, so suppose that we know the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors. And lambda 1 is 3, lambda 2 is 4, so lambda 1 is less than lambda 2. And then there's v1 and there's v2 given. And we want to find the general solution, and then we want to sketch the face portrait. Okay, so first form the general solution is just this formula here. And you can just plug in the values and then write this out. So what is a little bit more interesting here is to look at the force face portrait. So we see that here we have lambda 2 bigger than lambda 1 and bigger than 0. Then um, we know that as time grows, um, this term here will be dominating, so the solution will approach v2. But then as time goes to negative infinity, then um, this term will dominate. It will go in the direction of v1. Okay, so keeping that in mind, we can actually um, just sketch the face portrait immediately. Okay, so here's the graph. We have lambda 2 bigger than lambda 1, bigger than 0. And then we have v1 and v2, the direction illustrated here. So this is the line in the direction of v1, and this is in the direction of v2. And since both eigenvalues are positive, the arrows are pointing away from the origin. And finally, in between, how does the solution behave? And we know that the solution um, at negative infinity is asymptotically in the direction of v1. So it will come out tangentially in the direction of v1, and then it will bend. And then as it grows, it will go approach asymptotically the direction of v2. Okay? And then once you have understood how to draw here, then here you know it comes out in the direction of v1 and then approaches v2. And similar here, come out in the direction of v1 and approach v2. And similar here, comes out in the direction of v1 and then approach v2. And therefore, they bend in this um, way that's indicated here, okay, qualitatively. Okay, so finally, let's do a summary of the cases we have considered so far. So first case, if lambda 1, lambda 2 are real with opposite sign, then the origin is a settled point and it's unstable. And then if uh, lambda 1, lambda 2 are real but distinct and with same sign, then the origin is called a node. And there are two cases here for stability. If lambda 1, lambda 2 are positive, then the node is a source and is unstable. And then if lambda 1, lambda 2 are negative, then the node is a sink and it's asymptotically stable. Okay, so um, this is a summary for the cases of two real eigenvalues that are distinct. Okay, next time we will look at other more complicated situations. Okay, so that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.